Hello everyone, welcome back to Spectrum Classes. This is our part 4 video on the topic metallurgy and in this video we are going to discuss different terms. One is calcination, roasting and smelting of ores. These terms are very important and the very basic terms in terms of metallurgy and these are very useful and if we understand the concept behind these, it would be very easy for us to understand the processes which are involved in the term metallurgy. This is very useful for class 10th, 12th and material science and this is also useful for the competitive. So let's start with the terms calcination, roasting and smelting of ores. So before discuss about these terms, let us have an idea about the uh, ores of the different metals based on their reactivity. As we discussed in our previous videos that metals are based on their reactivity divided into these five groups and on that basis they form different combinations of salts. Based on these salts, what we have seen over here, we are mainly having sulfates, carbonates, oxides and uh, hydroxides also. So alkali and alkaline earth metals, we are having chloride salts. Too. So generally what we have seen over here is that most of the ores are having oxygen in them. Here you can see in case of sulfates, carbonates, oxides hydroxides so we are having oxygen over there and after concentration of ores depending on the process which we are following we need to get the metal oxide out of these salts we need to get the metal oxide so all the salts having oxides except chlorides and sulfides here you can see. so what we need to do to get this metal oxide from their ore we need to heat the ores below their melting point first. So if we are doing this process in the absence of air or in the presence of air, so if it is done in the absence of air or limited supply of oxygen, then that is called calcination, right? And if it, it is done in the presence of oxygen, then that is called roasting. So here are the terms calcination and roasting. So since most of the ores are having oxygen in them, we follow the process of calcination that is heating of ores below their melting point in the absence of air. And where we do not have oxygen, then that needs oxygen. Therefore, we heat the ores below their melting point in the presence of air that is called roasting. This is the only difference in the presence or in the absence. Calcination in the absence of air and roasting in the presence. I hope you understand these terms and their basics and the logic behind these terms, right? So in the process of calcination, the concentrated ore is heated below its melting point in the absence of air or in the limited supply of air. Such heating results in the conversion of hydroxides and into their oxygen. For example, here you can see, suppose we are having aluminum hydroxide. We get Al2O3 plus 3H2O out of this without supplying any oxygen. The next is Fe2O3. This is the crystalline water or this is hydrated water. So on heating in the absence of air, the hydrated water is removed from the ore. And if suppose we are heating this zinc carbonate which is known as calamine and this gives us zinc oxide plus so in all three cases we need not to supply the air while we are heating. Right? So this process of heating below their melting point in the absence of air is known as calcination. Of ores. Here is the conclusion that hydroxides, carbonates, bicarbonate are converted into their oxides and hydrated water or we can say water of crystallization evaporates in this process of calcium. The next is roasting of the concentrated ore is heated below its melting point in the presence of air that results in the oxidation of ores. So here you can see when the ore is of sulphide ore like galena, cinnabar, etc. or pyrites, we are having sulphides in them. And this sulphide or this sulfur on reaction with oxygen, so it requires the 
supply of oxygen it converted into so2 and in the form of gas and it is evaporated this sulfur is most of the time accompanied with arsenic impurity on heating the ore with the supply of air this arsenic oxide is formed which is volatile in nature suppose we are he uh, heating this zinc sulfide zinc sulfide is zinc blend and if we heat this zinc blend with the supply of air or oxygen below its melting point then this zinc blend is converted into zinc oxide plus sulfur dioxide so this sulfur dioxide is removed and we get zinc oxide suppose we are having uh, the impurities of sulfides arsenics then we go for roasting of ores rather than calcine the next term is smelting so there are some infusible earthy impurities present in the ore infusible means those impurities which are having very high melting point then here i'll just show you with the with this equation ore which is having infusible impurity means this impurity is having very high melting point then we add some other materials with this ore and heated this ore in the presence of air with high temperature then these infusible impurities converted into fusible mass since we are heating this ore at very high temperature then the metals are converted into molten state and these fusible mass of this infusible impurities float over the molten metals cause this is immiscible in that molten metal the nature of impurities in the ore can be acidic as well as basic so what is acidic which is non metallic right non metallic oxides are acidic in nature and basic metallic oxides are basic in nature. this concept we have already discussed in the metals and non metal video non metal oxides like silica phosphorus pentoxide etc and basic impurities are like calcium oxide magnesium oxide iron etc so just to remove such kind of impurities the flux which we select for acidic impurities we need basic flux and for basic impurities we need acidic flux so now you can understand what is called smelting the mixture of ores with suitable flux is heated at high temperature in the presence of air this process is called smelting in this process metal is obtained in the molten state and the fusible mass which is known as Slag floats over the molten metal. So, what are the new terms which we have discussed in this slide? First is smelting, second is flux, slag, and nature of flux, acidic flux, and basic. Right? So, these are the new terms which we understood. Now, the example of smelting of ore. So, what we have discussed in fusible impurities plus flux, we get slag or fusible mass. So in case of extraction of copper, what has been done? So copper is having impurity of iron oxide. So iron is a metal and metal oxide here is basic in nature. So for this basic impurity, what we which kind of flux is required? So we require acidic flux, right? So acidic flux is what? Which is non-metallic in nature. So here silicon dioxide is used as a acidic flux in the extraction of copper, right? So it forms FeSiO3 which is in the form of fusible mass or slag and this fusible mass is float over the molten copper. Right? Similarly in case of extraction of iron, what we have seen, we are having silica impurity which is acidic in nature right so for this acidic impurity what we require we require basic flux so here calcium carbonate is used as a basic flux and it forms CaSiO3 as a slag and carbon dioxide which is is in the gaseous so this is the process of smelting right so this depends if your ore is having infusible earthy materials of acidic or basic nature to that we are adding the flux materials to convert that infusible impurity to fusible mass right so i hope you understood these three points like calcination roasting and smelting if you find this video useful then subscribe my channel and give me a thumbs up thank you all